Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 223. I'm your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com. We're excited to have with us the Ringo nominated and award winning comic creator of Halloween Man, Drew Edwards. Howdy. Drew. Good to be here. How you doing? You know, I'm doing good. We're getting rained on here in Austin tonight. So, you know, I it's it's a dark and stormy night. I guess it's a it's a appropriate for some of the subject matter that we're gonna we're gonna talk about. It's perfect Halloween man weather, huh? Yes, yes, a dark and <laughs> stormy night. <laughs> but before we jump into it, I you you're here to you you're talking about your relaunch of Halloween Man and these can be found at uh, globalcomics.com with yep. almost your entire library is available on there right now, correct? Yeah, right now it's on there for free and it should be up there uh, through the end of the year for free. So, wow. you know, we, we were we were wanting to really, when I moved from uh comiXology over the global comics you know the main thing is i was like i can only i can only leave comiXology once so how could i make as big of a splash as possible you know how can i motivate people to check out global comics and you know check out halloween and on global comics and you know i was thinking okay let's let's get everything up there we'll get everything up there for free you know there's there's mm. almost two decades of comics up there and uh you know, it's it's a lot of reading material, uh, you know, and you have no financial barrier for, from checking out the entire Halloween Man universe. Uh, we also got the spinoff series, uh, Lucy Chaplin's Science Starlet. That's that's also up there for free. So there's wow. a lot of reading. Okay. It's, a, it's a whole new comic book universe for those unfamiliar. They can they can check it out. And for the old fans uh there's two new things up there uh for example there's the there's the latex avenger crossover which which you were just talking about so you know i'm i'm excited i've i've had a really positive experience with global comics so far so so talk to us a little bit uh about halloween man and where the inspiration of that character came from well, you know, uh, my my primary inspirations were were two things. Um, one, I have, and the first comics that I read were through my local library, and most of them were Silver Age comics, particularly the ones mm. that I gravitated to were uh, Silver Age Marvel. You know, I lo I love the Fantastic Four, but uh, so there's that that flavor. But it's it's brushing up against monster movies uh, because that was my other big life going back to my childhood and when you watch a lot of monster movies uh particularly like classic monster movies the monster usually gets killed at the end um and you know the monster um they don't get that they get killed at the end of the movie so i wanted to tell a story where the monster was the good guy and the monster was the you know got the girl and you know the monster was the hero and that's that's really it um you know like i think one of the reasons why i loved fantastic four so much is the the thing because he was a he was a superhero that was also a monster like i've i've right. often heard people say well it's 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 evil it's evil dead 2 meets jack kirby you know like and it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> seem like a, a a thing that should should quite work but you know i who doesn't love a good uh, who doesn't love a good beauty and the beast story now so what's the origin of halloween man does he so is this so this is basically like a cross between a horror comic and a superhero comic or does it kind of um lean more towards one genre or the other it depends on the story um mm. some stories are very horror some stories are very you know superhero slash adventure we also have all stories that that lean into to comedy because i i you know i like to laugh like everybody else mm -hmm. as far as the origin of halloween man goes within the the comic uh he was killed on halloween night by a vampire how rude and uh, the <laughs> a, a a necromancer is across him. And he resurrects him with uh, the force of a horror movie marathon. 
So Halloween, he comes back as Halloween man and he's sort of the predator of other monsters. Like he eats other monsters to survive. Um, okay. so, so there's this, this idea of, um, I guess, scaring scary things like what they would be scared of. Um, he has the power of the horror movie sequel. He always comes back. Cause like when you, the other thing that happens when you watch lots of monster movies and I don't care if it's Christopher Lee as Dracula or Jason Voorhees or whatever, like, the monster gets killed, but they always come back in the sequel. So I thought, well, what if that was a superpower? Um, so <laughs> grind him up, add him, I am, you know, chop him the bits. Halloween man's always going to come back. And he's all, if you're, you're, you know, a, 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 um, evil SOB, he's always, always, always going to get you. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I like to have fun with, um, I guess these sort of iconic tropes, you know, right. And, and we, you know, when you're combining something like, you know, superheroes and horror, like, I think you, you have to find, you know, the ways the tropes connect together, but you also have to be, be able to uh, instill a lot of, of humor because both genres uh, are, are, you know, they have a lot of weird stuff. So, you know, that gives you a lot of stuff that you, to, to poke fun at as well. Right. Right. Now, what about like, is there a villain, like a, an arch nemesis that Halloween man has to work, work with a lot? Uh, there is an arch nemesis is a character called the, the phantom hood. And okay. uh, he's, he's got a, uh, you know, a cloak, obviously. Um, and he wears a leather mask that looks like a ghost type face. And he has the power of, of ectokinesis. He can control anything with ectoplasm in it. He can pass through the wall, a wall like a ghost. He can create weapons out of, of slime. Um, I, you know, he's, he's a very nasty character, though. He's, he's what they would call on, on TV tropes a, a politically incorrect villain because he's... Um, I, I I wanted to put everything that you know all the isms into one character. So he's he's racist, he's sexist, he's classist. Like he's pretty much every way you can be a slimy human being in one <laughs> guy. So like when 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 he when he you know gets the stuffing beat out of him, you don't feel too bad. But you know like that's that's. Basically, you know, we don't have a whole lot of recurring villains. You know, the Phantom Hood is one of the few characters that's durable enough to survive his encounters with Halloween Man. You know, as I said, he he eats a lot of his villains. So there's, we, we you know, he doesn't have as big of a rogues gallery as, say, uh, Batman, you know, because of, because of that reason. Um, but, uh, you know... That's I think when you do have bad guys that that make return appearances, I think that honestly makes them a little bit more impressive in that way because they're like, gosh, you know, they they somehow survived that because you know it, Halloween Man is a bit of a horror show if you're one of the villains in the comic. <laughs> now, and so because right now you have available that anybody can go to, as we say, go to globalcomics.com backslash Halloween man. And which is really interesting is that you can check it out. Um, or you can do a search, go to global comics. That's with an X.com. And we'll put a link in the show notes about this. So the difference is that Halloween man is an ongoing series. So what's the difference? Yeah. How is it from a writing perspective, instead of having a, just a series that ends, what are some of the, challenges and benefits that you have as a writer as a creator to have an ongoing series uh you know i think the ability to develop characters over time um and also like i've grown as a writer alongside the series like i think if you you go on there and you read like the earliest stuff you know they're they're a lot more tongue in cheek because i wasn't mm. uh as comfortable doing drama uh, you know, or even melodrama as, as I am now, 
you know, the, the, the newer stories, you know, latex Avenger crossover, notwithstanding have a lot more emotional, um, weight to them. Um, so I think that's something that, you know, when you're dealing with characters in a, a, you know, the same set of characters in the same universe over a period of time, you, it really allows you to like, let them grow, let them change, you know, mm. and actually because I was, um, you know, going back some of these early comics, I hadn't looked at them in, in years, you know, it is interesting it would, to even me to see like the changes in the characters from, from start to finish, like the, you know, Solomon Halloween man, um, went from being this like very abrasive, almost uh guy Gardner esque a character in the first you no know, the first earlier stories where he's just you know constantly this this curmudgeon um to um you know a character that's a lot more more sensitive and more uh well-rounded um right. you know now uh you know and some of that was by design because you know you don't want a static character you want them to grow and change and everything but I think it's also just I've I've matured as a writer and I've matured as a person. So what I want out of a lead has has changed from when I was in my early twenties. Right. But that's a good point though, too, is like as you've evolved as a writer and as you've grown, uh, as you've as you, you you've grown into a and you know, as a as and have more experience. Did you feel like you had to tweak the character to make it more relatable to you as a writer? instead of how you were relatable to the character as a writer in your 20s you know it wasn't it wasn't like always deliberate you know some of it was because like when i was in my 20s i were, were a very angry period for me like a right mm. ar around the time that i was developing this comic um i was in a, a car accident that killed my that killed my twin and uh, you know, that's, that was incredibly traumatic. So like, you know, I was, a, I was a mess for years. And honestly, if it wasn't for the comic, I don't know if I would still be here, but because of that, you know, Halloween man being an angrier character, I think, you know, that was like a cathartic thing for me that I don't necessarily need as much now. That being right. said, um, there's a there is a lot of me in the character um you know like like i have put a lot of my personal journey into it so like there you know there is that deliberateness to it as well like as much as i said it, it not all of the changes were deliberate metaphorically my own journey through you know dealing with mental illness dealing with trauma dealing with you know grief into this comic, which makes it sound like it's a really heavy piece of work, but the book is fun. You know, I think that's the thing that everybody would take away from it. So like, it was a positive outlet where as like in my twenties, I didn't have as much, you know, like the comic probably was my only, only positive outlet. <laughs> Um, is there any other characters like either your tertiary characters that also kind of represent a, a bit of your your journey over the years as well? You know, like, I mean, when you're writing characters, they're all a bit you to a degree, like even, you know, the less savory characters, you know, you're trying to like, you know, work through stuff and and you know or or even if it's just like something you're you're mad about the world and you're like gosh i i you know i would love to to you know um you know the the, the lucy character you know it's funny like i didn't the character was around for like 11 years before i met my wife jamie and yet when i met jamie it was sort of like meeting lucy so um the characters are, you know, the character's primary ability is that she's a polymath and she can pick up any skill that she needs. Um, and Jamie is very much that same way while still being this like very glamorous, um, stylish put together woman. And um, 
you know, I so obviously since the character was around so long, I didn't start out going like, oh, draw this character like this this one woman that I haven't met yet. Um, but you know, I did meet Jamie, and you know, we you know became a couple and everything. It didn't take too long. Started saying like, you know, hey. If I needed an outfit for Lucy for an issue, I would just send something Jamie owned, like a picture of it over to one of the artists, for example. <laughs> so like that's that's a you know, that's a life imitating art or art imitating life. I, I don't know which it is, but like that's that kind of situation. Um, you know, there's another character in the comic named named Bella, who is a half demon assassin and is very much based off of my my twin that that was killed um and uh you know personality wise they're they're very uh close to each other so you know there there is certain things there are certain characters that definitely seek up sync up with with real life people um or you know there's certain stories that that even if you weren't aware of it. I am, you know, sync up with like certain events. Like, like for example, I, you know, I have a story called Halloween man, me, uh, Halloween man versus the invisible man. And when I, when I wrote that, like that story is very dark. And when I wrote that, like I was going through a divorce with my first wife and I was living in Las Vegas and I was, I was very lonely. And, you know, I would, I would go over to this, this coffee shop that was behind my apartment and, and just, right for hours and that really resulted in that story and i think the darkness of that story but you know ultimately like the, the there's that sort of longing in that story about wanting to to leave the darkness and come back into the light i think that was like me putting what i was dealing with at the time into into you know the energy of the story even though the story line itself you know it's it's not about divorce per se but it was a way of coping with those feelings. And, you know, I think, you know, obviously it's not uncommon for, for creatives to do that, you know, with, mm. with writing or art or music, but uh, you know, I, I, like I said, this comic is my therapy. I've, I've always sort of leaned back on it whenever I, I need to express something. How does your editing process work? Do you self edit or do you have somebody that looks at the script before start putting pencil to to paper to sketch it out i am a very um by the seat of my pants writer like i i mm -hmm. you know i have a good buddy jason henderson who is a very you know successful novelist and he makes gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs of notes and you know does a lot of world building before he even starts to write I usually just start with a title and and go. Um, mm. That being said, editors are important, and I do um, I do work with with people. Um, you know, there's a gentleman in in England who's also a comic book writer. His name is Russell Hillman. Um, I met him on the on the Miller World board way 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 back in the day, and he has been the editor on Halloween man for a long time. I also work with, you know, my wife has now become an editor and she's actually, um, she's, she's tougher on me than I think even Russell is. Like if she thinks the line of dialogue is no good, she, she will tell me she's a very good editor though. Um, and, and, you know, both of them take a look at it before, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we, we, we put anything out, you know, I also, because I have a Patreon and everything, I also have people that I go through you know, where I, I let people test read a script. And, you know, I, if, if you know, there's, there's something that that like a fan who is reading something going, Hey, that doesn't, that doesn't work quite so well. Like I might consider changing it, but like, you know, one of the beauties of being an independent is that you don't edit or edit all of the rough edges off of something. You know, like I, I think, you know, it doesn't have that um, that sort of uh, polish that like a mainstream comic has. Like characters, characters change in ways, and you know they'll do things 
that they might not do because I am allowed to to fly by the seat of my pants and and you know take chances and that kind of thing. Now, how so? How did you find? You also got some artists. Where did you? So for those that are listening, that says, "Hey, you know what, Drew? I love the book. I got." a comic book, but I don't know where I'm going to find artists. Where did you find your artists? You know, like initially it was a lot of people I met at conventions. Um, you know, that's that, you know, of course is looking back, you know, two decades ago. Um, my long-term collaborators, the people I still work with, um, you know, you, you showed the, the cover of the super deform. That's a Nicola Scott image. Um, that was through the Miller World Miller World Forum. Like that was like a, a great space for uh, young comic book creators to sync up and and you know start projects and work with each other. I you know I work with people who are are close by relatively, but then I also work with people as far as like Australia or or Spain, you know, like England, you know, like I, I, I get around, I guess <laughs> that's the nature of the internet. So what is, so you're talking before about global comics. What is it about global? So why did you leave comiXology and go to global comics for those that want to learn more about the different platforms that they could look at? So, um, <laughs> that's a, a delicate question that you've asked because I don't want <laughs> I don't want to throw everybody comicsology under the bus but the the problems that comicsology have been well documented and you know I encourage people to google search that um when they merged with Amazon um it was a a decline and you know starting from October of last year which is really go time for me as you can imagine um mm. there was a lot of of issues with the site so um i when i was in new york comic con uh last last year i started talking to publishers uh you know i started reaching her out and you know letting it be known that i wanted uh, a new home for it and you know i had initially wanted to go with a print publisher like i wasn't necessarily thinking that oh i want to you know go to another digital platform but uh you know the the guys from global comics reached out to me and we had several meetings and they talked up what they were about which is you know first of all a lot of creative freedom you know the fact that it's a, a community you know that kind of thing but also uh you know what their plans were for the future and everything and because they were you know just positive about the medium medium of comics it was hard not for me want to want to get in the ground floor of that and you know i i i feel very lucky because you know that they centered their promotions for global comics in you know september and october around halloween man and so i was kind of the ambassador of the site for a few months and uh That's you know cool. yeah like they were you know they're great people i think um you know the the deals that they offer in terms of creative freedom in terms of getting your work out there uh you know and the audience that they get you is is second to none and i you are a young comic book creator and you are wanting to you know maybe you're thinking about webtoons or comicsology i would suggest that maybe try global comics first because it just i think that it, they're going to take over the digital space like they really know what they're doing mm. and so how how difficult is it for those that are that are looking at that might that might not be very adept at the the digital piece of it they say listen i like comics holding it in my hand how would i drew get this on global comics do i have to scan my comic book and send it up how would that how would that work for somebody that might not be as as adept as that 
easy as pie. Just go to the site, click on a comic book. And, you know, if it's a free comic book, you like all of mine, you can just start reading. Uh, however, you can also possibly buy PDFs. You can buy downloads. You can read it on your phone. You can read it on your laptop. You can read it on your tablet. And actually, starting next year, uh, they're going to be working on setting up a, a print component. They're working with SourcePoint oh, cool. Press towards that. So those of you who who don't necessarily want to read a comic on your laptop, like you, you'll have the option of saying, "Oh, I like this Halloween Man character. Uh, I can order this issue and this issue to be printed up and and sent right to me." And that's going to be cool as well, right? Now, so what what's next then for you, Drew? When it comes to the Halloween, as you say, you re, you're republishing them. Do you have a lot of scripts already? Because right now you have up to issue thirty nine, I believe, is on Global Comics. How many? Once you get the ball rolling and people want to get get reading more and more of them, how how quickly are they going to see new issues? Well, the thing that we're doing that was different than what we were doing on Comixology, like we're, we're kind of uh, going back a bit to our, our roots. Halloween Man started out as a web comic. Um, okay. And, you know, what I'm doing is I'm putting up what I'm going to be doing in the future and what I've done with the two new Halloween Man stories that are on Global Comics is that I am putting up entire stories like, oh, you know, okay. the issue, the, the issues, like if you go click on something and read it, like it, it's not going to be like broken down in the chapters. You just, you know, click on it and that's an entire story for you to enjoy. So what we're, we're going to be seeing into 2023 is, you know, first of all, I have a lot of stuff because of the issues with comiXology that was, was half finished. So, um, I am going to have a lot of stuff that's going to very quickly be finished up and uh, very rapidly start coming out in 2023. Um, I have tons of scripts that I have been sitting on as well. I have almost five years worth of scripts that we're, uh, you know, we're working towards the 25th anniversary of Halloween Man now. So we're going to have a lot of big, big bang up story arcs coming out with very cool uh, you know, concepts, very cool villains, very cool monsters, uh, all that good stuff. And do you know, so what are some of the things, is there like a, because your, your, your world is so expansive, do you have like a wiki or something where someone's going to say, Hey, I want to learn more about this character. How do I want to learn more? Like what's their backstory? What's their power level or anything anything like that is there a like a a who's who people can kind of yeah i should do that um i don't have anything like that right now although i would say like halloween man does have an entry on tv tropes uh which is a great time waster in general um but if you google search halloween man on tv tropes you'll learn a surprising a lot about the comic just by looking at the tv tropes entry on Halloween Man, which is one of the things that I think, one of the, when I learned that there was a Halloween Man TV tropes entry, I think that was one of the most, the, 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 one of the proudest moments in my career. Um, Cause I, I love that site and I, I love, you know, I, I, it's the thing I, if I have insomnia often, I will, I will just pick, I like, I will search, you know, like I'll look up crisis on infinite earths or something or, or, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I'll just read TV tropes until my eyes get tired again. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, you could go to any one of my social, if you want to know anything about the Halloween Man characters, you know, can go to any one of my social medias. I'm, I'm very happy to engage with you and answer questions. Um, you know, I actually just a, a few days ago had a, a lovely exchange on Facebook with a guy who was asking questions about uh, the hack slash crossover. And, uh, you know, I, I'm always happy to answer questions, but you know, the best thing you can do if you want to learn is, you know, go read the comics. And I would say Mm. uh, they're very new reader friendly. Every single, almost every single one of them has bios of all the characters that appear in them at the start of the book. 
And, uh, you know, there's also a synopsis at the start of most of them. And I would say like, yeah, see synopsis right there. Um, right. I would say like, if there's a particular story that looks interesting, like you don't necessarily have to start with the origin story. Like you can, you can say, oh, you know, tomb of captain evil. That sounds interesting to me. I'm going to read that, you know, uh, the broken man. I want to read that. Like I try to make every issue as, as new reader friendly as possible, because I'm a big believer that every comic should be able to be someone's first, you know, cause that's how mm. we all fell in love with comics. Right. Now, let me have, so my next question for you is that because you have different artists and different, uh, different ones, and they see, as you said, some are more horror, some are, are more, more comedic, are all of them canon in Halloween Man, or some of these just seem to be like a world adjacent version of Halloween Man? No, it's all canon. It all counts. Okay. Like, okay. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't do too much. Like if, if, if there's a story that I put out and I don't like it, I, I just take it off the web and I, and I don't, you know, there's, there's only two stories that I've ever done that with where I'm like, this is, this is stricken from the canon, like 99%. <laughs> of Halloween man is canon. And, you know, I mean, obviously there's certain instances where characters are like addressing the, the fourth wall or something. So yeah, you right. might want to take that with your tongue and your cheek, but like, you know, I want to make everything count. Um, you know, like if, if your first, if your first comic of Halloween man that you've read is the, the crossover with latex Avenger, which we've name dropped, which is a pretty silly story, but you're like, does, is that Canon? As far as I am concerned, that story is Canon. Like it mm -hmm. happened, like it, you know, characters could reference it. Um, same thing with, you know, the hack slash crossover, you know? Yeah, it happened. It counts. Um, you know, like, you know, I think readers like that kind of thing as far as, you know, you mentioned like an expansive universe. Like, I think right. that's one of the reasons why people love, uh, you know, the Marvel universe is they have all these characters that they can latch on to, um, you know, like same thing here. Uh, and, you know, like, I don't think you necessarily have to know who Halloween man is. You could come in if you're, if you're just a fan of Dan's work, I think you could come in and still get, enjoyment out of this particular issue because you know it's it's just an entertaining it's just an entertaining romp as they used to right. say so then what what's next what's next for you drew well i am working on a uh new storyline uh called entropy it's our version of an intercompany crossover like uh the 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 horror version of crisis on infinite earths like oh cool uh you know every the the you know it's funny when i wrote this i wrote it seven years ago and you know i've i i've been you know updating it ever since but i you know the multiverse wasn't you know so much a thing as it is now in pop culture so I, I I always worry that like people are gonna read this and be like, oh, you know, like he's he's riding on all these people's coattails. And you know, the only coattails I was I was riding on were all those original DC multiverse stories, because those are the things that inspired me, uh, which are in turn inspiring all the other stuff now. But uh, you know, it's because it's Halloween man, it definitely has its own spin on it. Um, I also am working on you know my first non-comic book i'm working on a a book on christmas folklore it is illustrated uh it's illustrated by a very talented lady named uh chandra free but it's mm. book on on christmas folklore called the 12 monsters of christmas um mm. and uh you know i've been i've been working on it slowly off and on for for four years it's it's something that, you know, I'm now I'll start to shop around to publishers. And, you know, apparently I just, I want to be exhausted the entire holiday season. Cause like, it's not enough for me to own Halloween. I have to get in on the Christmas business as, as well. <laughs> awesome. Well, listen, you know, this has been great, you know, and Drew, you gotta, you gotta come back on when you have your, uh, I'd love to hear more about your, your book. Will do. Yeah. Thanks for having Excellent. me. 
You're welcome. I remember watching the real Ghostbusters cartoon and the scare and still to this day, still that's still a horror in the back of my head was the season one episode with the boogeyman. Yes. The boogeyman. That was so good. I, I, I don't know if that's like Straczynski, J. Michael Straczynski wrote some of those, those shows and, I think uh, that's the reason why that was kind of above the caliber of your your usual Saturday morning tie-in fair. Right. Like real real Ghostbusters holds up pretty well. Right. Like yeah, I that I was so scary. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> 